Thomas Jefferson once said that nothing in the world can stop a man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goals. Nothing in the world, however, can help the man with the wrong mental attitude from achieving his goals. This statement is a reinforcement of the fact that the mind is a very powerful tool. You know, we're always told about the power of the mind, but how powerful is your mind? In this episode, we'll be talking about mental toughness. Welcome back to Books and Things. I'm Joan and it's a pleasure to have you back. Today we'll be reviewing a book by Damon Zaharis. I don't know how to pronounce it, but pardon me if it's not a pronunciation. Mental Toughness Handbook. So, Mental Toughness Handbook. I actually picked out this book. I was going through Amazon trying to look for my next read and I stumbled on this book. For me, I don't know why <laughs> I just got attracted to this book. Maybe it's because I'm trying to understand what it means to be tough mentally because we have a lot of people complaining of depression, a lot of people complain committing suicide. Like the world, especially in the past year, has been very tough. And those who are meant to survive have to develop an attitude of mental toughness. They have to develop their minds to be able to resist the pain and the uncertainty we're going through in the world. So that's basically why I was attracted to this book. Damon is an American writer and author. He's a bestseller and the author of the book, The Art of Saying No, which is another amazing book I think we, we, we might have to review in the future. The Mental Toughness Handbook is actually a, a book that is meant to help improve your mental toughness or resilience or whatever synonym you choose to give to the world. His goal in this book is to make you stronger in the mind. Whatever you imagine as being stronger, that's his goal. Whether it's to resist self-pity, to fight um, self-esteem issues. This book has a mass of exercises. And that's one thing I enjoyed about the book. It had exercises that you could practically do as you do as you're reading you know so, some of the self-help books and motivational books and, and books like of in that genre sometimes they are very philosophical and they are very theoretical it's hard for you to actually understand what exactly the author is trying to say or where they are coming from however in this book Damon made it more practical at the end of each chapter he put a section for exercise so you could read the chapter do the exercise and as you're doing the exercises it helps you train yourself it's it's like a training on the go it's not just you reading a bunch of material and trying to cram it absolutely not before we get into the amazing lessons i i learned from reading this book i wanted to talk about you developing mental toughness why should you or anybody else care about being mentally tough like why should that bother you what are the benefits of being mentally tough the first benefit of developing a mentally strong mind is that you improve your performance in whatever you're doing whether you're a student whether you're an entrepreneur or you're just an employee in an office or wherever you work it helps you improve your performance developing mental toughness is, gives you the ability to go forward when you're stuck you need you need something to be able to push you to go to the next level that's what mental toughness is about it's about you developing the skills to be able to do things even when your body doesn't feel like doing even when you're not in the mood the second benefit of developing mental toughness is the ability to manage stress there are people that when you see them stressed i for one sometimes you know you know that there's something not going right like being mentally tough gives you the ability it's not going to come overnight trust me but it trains you on how to manage stress on how to manage just negative emotions on how not to um, pour out your frustrations on those around you because you're feeling a sense of of rejection or you're feeling sad or you're feeling drained you learn how to manage it in a positive way and not wear out those around you or even wear out yourself the third benefit of being mentally tough is your willingness and your ease of letting things go now this doesn't mean that you become passive of important things or you just become nonchalant you just become nonchalant and careless of about what's happening in the world no but you become very 
skillful at separating what you can control from what you cannot control you become accepting of things you can control and things you cannot control and you don't live your life in anguish because there are a lot of problems in life and if you don't know how to separate the problems you can handle from those you can't you end up being a very bitter and angry person you just need to find the balance and being mentally tough is going to teach you and train you on how to find that balance those are a few benefits of developing a mentally st strong mind there are a lot more benefits but we're just going to stick to this three for now for the sake of the length of the video so what are the lessons i learned from reading this book this book um to be honest i didn't quite complete it i ended at the i think page 137 i'm going to complete it um this tomorrow or the day after but i needed to shoot this video so i read at least a chunk of the book just so i can get some ideas to shoot the video so from the part of the book which i read i'm just going to give you a few lessons i've learned so far three lessons the first lesson i learned is that the best way to develop a habit is to start slow now when you're trying to develop your mind you're trying to get into doing new things or challenging yourself you have to start slow you know because the natural reaction to your body to something new is to reject it so the first the best way for you to be able to manage new changes is to start slowly if you're trying to exercise if you're trying to start a diet if you're trying to get into a new career start slowly you know or you're trying to learn how to read non-fiction books if they just give you a huge pile of books to read you're going to be overwhelmed and it's going to look so undesirable so the best way to do it is to start slow if you want to become better at exercising exercise for five minutes a day the next day do 10 or after a week you do 10 and just build the habit from scratch and your body gets used to it while you're going up the same with um reading non-fiction or whatever thing you want to do start slow practice practice as you get more comfortable doing it that's how better you become at doing it time the second lesson i learned is that true self-awareness goes beyond knowing oneself you know when they talk about self-awareness sometimes you just think it's about knowing yourself knowing your abilities knowing what you can do knowing your your strengths your weaknesses and stuff like that yes that's true so next thing but the real self-awareness is not just about knowing these things okay when you know these things what next true self-awareness is about knowing these things and finding a way to solve your negative traits if you're somebody who screams when you're angry maybe the best thing for you to do and train yourself is when you get angry you walk away or you sit quiet that's, a, that's another way to manage your weaknesses and Damon describes this very beautifully i'm just going to read it from his book we know certain triggers that make us angry tense or happy we're also aware that we have both good and bad traits but true self-awareness extends much deeper mentally tough people achieve it by purposefully investigating their psyches and developing compensatory strategies that help them deal with adversity so it's not just about knowing your strengths and your weaknesses it's about knowing them and developing strategies that help you deal with it it's not just okay to know it's okay for it being self-aware is knowing it and developing ways to deal with it the third lesson i learned from this book is that our inner critic limits us the most sometimes we often believe that the reason why we're not successful is because the government is bad our friends have refused to help us our family members have refused to help us everybody has abandoned us or like we tend to blame every single person around us and the system put in place without necessarily looking at our part to play we play in our predicament so to speak our inner critics is the most dangerous limitation no matter what every other person thinks if you believe that you can do something and you push yourself to do it there's a 99.99 percent .99 that you will succeed at that thing and even if you don't succeed you just get better at how to do it better you know so bird what if you tell yourself you cannot that thing in you that tells you you're not good enough you cannot do this um stop or people won't accept you for who you are and all sort of things it's going like you are the only person 
who can change your story basically and it starts by you telling yourself you're good enough because if you don't feel like you're good enough nobody is going to care about you i'm just going to tell you a story from this before i before before i came to canada i always wanted to study communications with my previous job i was trying to look for opportunities to go abroad and do um, a master's degree in communication right from school I always liked public speaking. I always liked doing communication. That's like my passion. It's something I'm very comfortable with. And it's something I like to do long term. However, when I came here and I was trying to find schools, I had people tell me that black people don't go into communication because they won't succeed. Yes. Not just people around. Like you had family members say that. You had friends say that. Like, are you crazy? Nobody comes here to do communication. Are you stupid? And... I even had some people surprised <laughs> that I was black in class, you know, because I'm the only black person in my class. Obviously, since a lot of people feel like black people won't succeed in communication industries, black people don't go to, go to the industries at all. And I'm like, why? Why shouldn't I? I feel like this is what I'm good at. I feel like I can become better at this and why not the best and if i'm the first african which i don't think i am to do this then that's going to be amazing so i just told myself this is what i want to do and i'm going to do it regardless of what any other person thinks i was not being arrogant about it i was just being very self-assured and very satisfied my inner critic was alive but submerged like i told my inner critic i know i'm the only black person in class I sound like nobody else with my African accent. People are going to make fun of me, but I don't really care. I know what I'm out to do and I'm going to do it the best way I possibly can. And that's really what matters, you know. As long as you're comfortable to tell yourself like you're good enough, it doesn't matter what any other person says. And trust me, with time, they will get to warm up to my decision. Or even if they don't, it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, I live my life for myself. If I'm happy, I sleep. <laughs> if I'm happy, good and fine. If I'm not, nobody really gives a damn when you sleep on your bed and you can't sleep the whole night while you're snoring, you know. So yes, make sure you convince your inner critic. Tell your inner critic you can. Once you and yourself are in alignment, there's really very little the world can do to attack you. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Books and Things with Joan. Um, I'm so, so, so excited that this channel is just getting better and better. Every time I shoot a video, I feel like I get more comfortable in front of the camera. And that's growth for me. And I really thank you for coming back every single week and being a part of this growth. I really, really appreciate you. Um, in, the next common, in the next coming weeks, I think... As I get better, I might have to be shooting two videos a week. So I might have to post on Monday and I'll post again on Thursday. And the reason being that um, the, the, I realize there's a lot of material on nonfiction and covering books alone, it's very limiting. So I'd like to expand. I have I stumbled on a few beautiful personal aces and there are a lot of lessons you can learn from people's experiences and their personal aces as of next week i'm going to be shooting two videos a week one on monday and one on thursday so yes we're getting better at this and thank you very much for sticking around stay blessed and have a beautiful week see you next monday